it was the power to get wealth that I encountered. Because it hasn't stopped driving me till now. It hasn't stopped driving me till now. It was not adopting a principle. It was encountering power. He said, my prosperity plan is not a promise. So it does not answer to prayers. It's not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. It's a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. Now understand me here. That we encounter the raw power of God by the word of God. By what? <laughs> and the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. The word of God is the carrier of the power of God. So every encounter with the word is an encounter with power. Because encounter with power. Because the word I've spoken to you, he said, they are spirit and they are life. So every encounter with the word empowers you with the spirit behind the word. Empowers us with the spirit behind the word. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. It lighted upon the whole of Israel. My prayer is that you will encounter the word that will unleash that power on your life this morning. Amen. You receive that come and say, I receive it. I say it loud, I'll receive it. I the loudest you can, I'll receive it. I and I remember saying to him, what is the covenant? Why the are remain? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. What? Now, it was me and him. It was not reading from a book. Right? And I was taught in book. I was books and I was praying. I was fasting. Hunting for the secret behind kingdom prosperity. Three day waiting. And then came the word of God expressly. So he took me to Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. I said, how reliable is this covenant? It was God and me speaking. And I can tell you this, and I'm telling you the truth in Christ, I lie not. I never saw that scripture in my life except that day. Except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. Jeremiah chapter 33. And verse 20, 20 and verse 25 down the line. He said, If you can break my covenant with the day and with the night, that there should not be night and there should not be day and night in their season. He said, Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. And because by chance my name is David, it struck like lightning. Now, and he went on, and the priest. And the Levite. That means this is my covenant with the redeemed of the Lord. If you can't stop the day and the night from exchanging position, you can't stop my plan. You can't stop my covenant. So the Lord said to me, every time you wake up in the morning, He said to me, It wasn't me analyzing it. Every time you look up in the day and you see the sun, then know that my covenant is enforced. And you look up in the night to see the moon. Then know that my covenant is enforced. That until you can stop the day and the night, the sun and the moon, you can't stop my covenant. That was the point at which I stood up. Hey, I can never be poor. Now, that was an impartation. That was an impartation. That's not revelation. I mean, I'm, I stood up and speak. Yeah. I was alone and I wasn't mad. The first statement was from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. It's not you, his covenant. That is his covenant of empowerment. The time that must be fulfilled for you to qualify to be empowered. 
And I saw it. So it's important for you to know no mortal man can empower another into realms of financial fortune. No. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he, not he and others. It is he that giveth the power to get wealth. Power to get wealth is not in your profession. It's not in your career. There is no professional career that doesn't have its long catalog of financial failures and slaves. There is, there is no job that can empower you into the realm of financial fortune. There is no career. It is God that gave them the power to get wealth. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. And he has no sorrow with it. So, so, it is important therefore to connect with the terms of that covenant and experience a bailout. A divine bailout into realms of financial fortune. You are hitting that now. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. We don't have the time, but let me run quickly. I said here, what is a covenant? A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on well defined terms and sealed with an oath. God said, I swear my integrity to deliver according to the terms of this covenant. I swear by myself. I swear by myself to deliver according to the terms of this covenant. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 15 to 18. When God made the promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying surely I will bless you. Amen. 15 to 18. Surely, in blessing, I will bless you to multiply and multiply that seed. He swore by himself. He swore by himself. So, every covenant is a deal to which God swears on his integrity. With this covenant, the covenant of prosperity anchors on the law of giving and receiving. Say with me, the law of giving and receiving. No one ignores this law and tastes it. You can't taste prosperity, talk less of financial fortune without embracing the law of giving and receiving. Job 22 and verse 21 to 26. Acquaint now thyself with God and then you'll be at peace. Thereby shall good come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be put, built up and thou shalt put iniquity far from thy tabernacles. And he went on and said, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, say financial fortune, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Say with me, financial fortune. Now, but you mentioned, receive, I pray thee, the law. That means there is no other way to it. And Paul tried to give us what that law is in Philippians chapter 4. He said, verse 15 to 19. He said, now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but ye only when I was in Thessalonica you sent unto me once and again unto my necessity therefore not because I desire a gift but I desire fruit that may abound to your account and he went on and said but I have all and I have I have only received from the part through the things that you sent you know he said uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 a sacrifice of a sweet odor, well pleasing and acceptable to God. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs of His riches and glory. The law of giving and receiving. The law of giving and receiving. Second Corinthians chapter nine, and beginning from verse six, 
he went on and said, But I say unto thee, he that sweats purely shall also be purely, and he that sweats bountifully shall also be bountifully. Therefore, as each one possesses his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, not for because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards us. So that we have enough sufficiency in all things. May abound unto every good work. Come and say financial fortune. Answers to the law of giving and receiving. There is no way to get there just receiving. If you are not a giver, you, are not, you cannot be empowered to prosper. Empowerment for prosperity is on the platform of the law of giving and receiving. Not receiving and giving. Giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. And that needs empowerment. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. He said, I want you to understand the grace of God which was bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. He said, that how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abandoned unto their, the riches of their liberality. Now, these were deeply poor people. Glory to God. And they were empowered for liberality. Now look at the next verse. He said, for to their power I bear record. And beyond their power. I'd like you to open for that beyond. Amen. To their power I bear record. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. There was an empowerment from heaven. That made them to be willing in their poverty to give. They were willing in their poverty to give. They were willing to give in their poverty. They were willing to give in their poverty. He said, pray in us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the ministry of, to the saint. Therefore, as you are bound in everything, see that you are bound in this grace also. Come on now. Lift up your two hands and say, I'll receive this morning power beyond my power in my given life. In my given life. In my given life. It takes that to assess the realm of financial fortune. Power beyond your power in your given life. It doesn't matter how long you may have been in church. If you are not a giver, you will never be empowered to prosper. But you need to be empowered to remain a tireless giver. In John 10, 17 and 18, Jesus said, Where really does my father love me because I need that my life? He said, No one took it from me. I lay it down by myself that I may take it again. I have power to lay it down. Come and say power. It takes some empowerment to be a delightsome and tireless giver. Receive that empowerment now in the name of Jesus. Receive that empowerment now in the name of Jesus. Receive that empowerment now in the name of Jesus. Because of the selfish nature of man, it takes divine empowerment to be a tireless distributor of God's grace. It takes some empowerment. We discover that tithe is the master key to a world of financial fortune. Come and say tithe. Say it loud, tithe. Bring your retire to the storehouse and prove me that if I will not pour you out a blessing, until there shall not be room enough to receive it. Say with me, financial fortune. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be made in my house. And prove me herewith, say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing until there, there will not be room enough to receive it. That is what tithe does. 
it launches us into the realm of financial fortune. I decree that grace to be a tireless titan be upon your life today. Tight is simply 10% of all our income. And all the tithe of the land is the Lord. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. All the tithe is the Lord. You don't play with it. You don't take any part of it or you'll be chargeable for it. Verse 31. And Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 22. All the tithe of the land is the Lord. Tithe is God's covenant portion that opens up the windows of heaven. The windows of spiritual blessings to us. It opens the windows of supernatural blessings to us. Tithe is our financial security because it rebukes the devourers for our sake. Tithe is our financial security because it rebukes the devourer. Look, if you steal from a tithe, you come under automatic cause. Because I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. If you steal from a tithe, God rebukes you with any form of affliction. You better be careful. You pick somebody's thing in church with a tithe, you come under heaven's rebuke. The man doesn't need to know. No. You steal from a tithe in church, you are dead. I mean, gone. Forget it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. don't, don't think you are smart you are smelling don't think you are smart I will rebuke so tight is your financial security anybody trying to mess up the things that pertain to a tighter comes under a cause this church has said many of that I mean I will be free you know, not even the lid of a barrel don't touch it if you carry it just go and give it to security man please I saw this one on the floor and free your life. Watch out. Our tithe is to be paid to the storehouse. That is where we receive our spiritual supplies. Can I hear your amen? Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 5 and 6. Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse. Jesus also validated tithe. Matthew 23 verse 23. This ought you to have done. And not to leave the other undone. Hebrews chapter 7. Here are men that die, he receive tithes, but there he receiveth them. Hebrews 7, verse 7 and 8. But for a tithe to be acceptable, it must be given joyfully. Say with me, God is not a need. Say loud, God is not a need. God is not a beggar. And my God is not a robber. So you give it joyfully, God doesn't need it. You need it. I need it. God doesn't need it. You need it. I need it. Give it joyfully and give it in faith. Give it believing. This is the master key to a world of financial fortune. I believe God for it. And then the heavens open. Therefore, we cannot ignore Titan and expect to work in financial fortune. Don't think you can bribe your way to God's blessings. No one ever ignores tithe and tastes financial fortune. No one. And can I tell you this? When God is not sure of the tithe of your next level, He won't let you get there. He will, he will just keep you there. When God says that to pay a tithe of 100 million, it will be difficult for you. He won't let you reach the place so your life can be saved. Can I hear your amen? amen. Because... Uh, it will expose your life to devour us. He loves us so much. So if you receive this empowerment today, there is no amount that will be itching your fingers when you are given. Because there are people in this room today that in your lifetime, you will write a hundred million check. Yeah. As tight. As what? God has no problem taking you there if it's conveys that we do it. And he knows what we do next year. He knows what you do 10 years time. So doesn't God, I will do it. I know you. 
I know you. I know everybody. You don't need to tell me about any man. I know all men. He knows what we do at one billion rem in business. He knows he may not see you again. He knows that when they come to check on why are you not in church, he knows we harass them. They say, okay, let me just keep him where he is so he can make him. I won't let him get near that because I will lose him. Please open up to this empowerment. Sir, can I tell you this? I saw I will be giving what cannot be lifted up in cash. Long time. That's why we introduce envelopes. And I saw a time is coming there is no way I can carry the cash I will give when there was no cash with me except on checks. So it's all about you. It's all about you. I saw the day this ministry came under an open heaven. Clean. It was no guesswork. Can I tell you this? We received our first one million in a whole year, 1988. 19 what? Now God showed me the way up. 1987. Maybe we spend a million now in a minute. No, 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 you see, I'm telling you how this thing works. Now, more than 10,000 people didn't follow us to Canaan land by actual accounting. Why were we 186 million excess of our income over the previous year in Canaan land? It has nothing to do with people. It has to do with heaven. I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. It has nothing to do with people. You don't think too much about people. That's why you miss it all the time. It has nothing to do with people. It has to do with God. Therefore, grace to be a tireless titan a delightsome titan, a joyful titan, an excited titan. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. One of my sons in the Lord came to me in the course of the week. And what was it? He said, I needed permission for us to be able to build this uh, chapel. And I looked at the design. It won't be less than 500 million. I said, how do you want to do it? He said, no, my family and I want to do it. It's in the same church. It's not anywhere else. In the same church. Therefore, receive today the giver's empowerment. The same way the heaven has remained open over your church since 87 till now. I decree your own open heaven right now. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow with it. Have you ever been harassed on giving in this church? It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. Receive that now in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the big hand of praise. We are out of time. Glory to God. Amen. You are in this first service today and you are not born again then. Yet yeah, that is where your covenant journey begins. If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and he has according to the promise. Wherever you are, you want to be born again, you want to be saved, please stand to your feet quickly. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to give your life to Christ? You want to become a child of God? You want your sins forgiven? Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remain standing. Anybody else can still join us. We want to pray with you right now in a minute. And you shall be saved. Please stand. You want to join us? Stand. I'd like to pray with you right now. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up. Wherever you are, quickly stand. We pray for you right there where you are. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two, there are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Maybe you are once saved, but at the point, I would say disconnect. You want to return back to Jesus. 
Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you at the same time. Everyone, I want to rededicate this our life to Christ. God bless you. God bless you. I want to dedicate your life to Christ. Please stand. God bless you. God bless you. I want to dedicate your life to Christ. Please stand. All of us who are standing, may I request that you move to the nearest eye to where you are and there you'll be prayed for. Those who are not in church last Sunday, there were some materials we made available to people. Please signify, raise your hand. The ushers will be there to put that in your hand. Ushers, please do that very fast. Do that very fast and make sure you serve everyone that needed these materials right now. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads in a moment for prayers. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. And say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud. Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. And I now know you came and died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Justify me by your blood. Save my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. And I cover each of you today with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered the remaining days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.